Hey, are you tired of fighting with your kids about cleaning up the playroom or their bedroom? Or is your house so full of toys and clutter everywhere from the kids and if you step on one more Barbie or Lego, you're going to scream? Let's talk about toy organization and kid-friendly storage solutions. So today we're gonna to talk about how to make room in your playroom. We're gonna talk about kid-friendly storage and organization systems. And we're gonna talk about a simple hack that you can do to help prevent the chaos moving forward. But first, in case you don't know who I am, I'm Andrea Brame. I blog at thismodernmess.com. I am a decluttering coach, professional organizer, and a recovering messy. Now that's right, I've been there, I done that, and nothing surprises me, so we're all good. <laughs> I help moms who are tired of the clutter and disorganization of their homes make space in their homes, room to live, and find more time to enjoy doing the things that they like doing with their loved ones. So if that sounds good to you, let's get started. So about those toys, here are my top three tips. Tip number one, be like Elsa, let it go. That's right, the best tip is simply to declutter. And this can sometimes be harder if you have older kids or kids that hang on to their stuff very dearly, but it is the best way to make sure that the playroom gets cleaned up easier. So if you are finding toys that are broken, worn out, um, outdated, uh, aged out, if your kids are still playing with their baby toys, for instance, and they're five, it's time to go through, edit them out, and make sure that the toys that are in the play space are the toys that your kids play with the most. Everything else, we have something else we can do with them. And that is tip number two. Use kid-friendly storage and organization. Now, what do I mean by this? What I mean is make it easy for them to clean up. That battle is because it's hard. There's too many steps. They don't understand instructions so much. So make it easy. This means don't use complicated systems. And unless your child is really into color coordination, I don't personally recommend organizing by color because that adds one more sorting process to everything. Is it more important for you that it's color coordinated or that it's cleaned up? That's my question. So we're going for easy and simple here. And here are some of the tools that I find do this. So first of all, open buckets and clear plastic bins with clip-on handles. So in this bucket, an open bucket, the kind that you would find in a cubby, one of those uh, cubbies that you can put the buckets in and store everything. Those are great for blocks, train sets. That one has a train set. Um, anything that's a group of items that can be quickly dumped in there, that's great. That is an easy organization tip and you just push it in and it's done. Kids understand that. Another thing that are great with kids are these clear bins with handles that flip down and they can easily put back up. These have magnetiles and you can put your instructor or mag warmers and you can put your instructions in there too. And when they're done playing, they just stick them back in, put them back on the shelf. It's really great and they stack perfectly. Um, another thing that you can use are these really tough Ziploc bags. I like them for card games, puzzles that you may have lost the box to, that sort of thing. And they can even stack in the basket. So that's another thing that you can use is baskets on top of a shelf. This one's empty, but you know, it's easy for kids to just toss things into. Um, shelves are good. Again, we talked about cubbies and I love giant bins or giant buckets, excuse me. You can get them at Target. I believe they used to be horse muck buckets to be honest, but now they're really cute and they hold stuffed animals and large items really well. Uh, another thing you can do is if the open bins and the chaos of color still bothers you, you can always use a cabinet. So when you open it up, there's shelves. You can put the baskets on the shelves and these act like drawers for the kids. They can pull them in and out. They can easily put them back. And then when you want to not see it anymore, you just close the door. It works really well. So tip number three 
is probably the hardest to do, but it is the simplest hack to keep up with this, and that is to stop buying single-use toys and the things that drive you crazy. Like, try to only bring into your house the toys that are easy to clean up, the toys that have more than one function so that they have multiple uses and then you don't have as much to clean up. So a good example of this is this billable. It is this cute little plastic seat. Honestly, I've bought, I've bought enough for my son and all of his besties when they're together that they can all spin because they sit on the floor and they spin. They also like to use this as a helmet. He walks around like this a lot. He can use it as a seat, a stepping stone, any a, a, a bin, a bowl, you know, they can put things and carry them around. There's so many things they can do with this Bilbo. It's one of his favorite toys. It fits in that giant tub I was telling you about. And it's easy to clean up. When he's done with it, I can just tell him put that away and he can put it back where it belongs. Just like that, it's less of a battle. So um, with play sets, you are gonna come across things that have lots of pieces, like Lego sets and that sort of thing, and that's fine, especially as your kids get older. As you saw with the magnet tiles, you can put things that have many pieces in a single area and stack them like that and use the vertical storage if you have more than one bin. You can also employ those open bins and right here we got the train set inside. So all of these pieces and parts, after, as they're cleaned up, they're just sort of make, it can be willy-nilly, it's fine. And then in the end, it's all cleaned up. So those are the top three tips for toy storage and organization. Now, the bottom line is aim for everything in that playroom, aim for everything in that bedroom to be able to be cleaned up in 10 minutes. That's what's gonna be the lifesaver. If you only have the number of things that your child can clean up or you can clean up in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, absolutely tops you're going to have an easier time keeping up with the clutter. So, on to some questions. These are things that I hear all the time related to toys, kids, decluttering and organizing. First one, what if I don't have room for all the toys in my playroom or bedroom? Well, we've kind of gone over this, but the answer to that is you need to get rid of some. You need to be like Elsa and let it go. Um, and the best way to show yourself what needs to go is to have a limit on the container. This is your shelf. This is your bookshelf. This is your closet. This is your bin. You have three bins. You can keep here in this room what fits in those three bins. That's the key. Everything that doesn't fit in that easily cleaned up space needs to either be donated sold, although I don't recommend doing that so much because it can stall your progress, or put into a toy rotation, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But basically, if it's not being currently used, it needs to be stored somewhere else. That's gonna make things a lot easier on you for cleanup. So question number two, what if my kid won't give up the toys? I'm there right now, it happens. When my son was younger, I could cull it, I could edit it, I could get rid of stuff pretty easily. Now that he's older, he wants to hang on to everything. And I have to accept that, I have to be respectful of that because it's his stuff. And I don't want him to grow up to hoard things because I wanted to be a minimalist. So if everything is special, that is a tricky situation. But again, give them a container, Tell them this is what you can store here and we will store everything else somewhere else. Um, this is really handy for a toy rotation. So with a toy rotation, everything that doesn't fit, everything you're gonna set aside for later, you're going to put in a bin. And that bin will be put in the attic or a closet or somewhere just for temporary so that later on you can switch some of the toys out. You're still not gonna use more space than you have, but the toys will be different, the games will be different, and that will keep things fresh for your kids and they won't be feeling like they're losing their precious items. So it's kind of a good scenario when you wanna get rid of stuff and they don't. Question number three, and this one is a doozy. How do I tell my friends and family to stop buying my kids so many toys? The best way to do that 
is when they're asking what's your kid into these days, tell them what activities they're into. Do they like arts, crafts, a sport, some sort of hobby? If they do, tell them those things. Even if there's a place that they like going a lot, like the zoo or a kid's museum, because then you can kind of gently guide them in the direction of buying sports gear that they need. Um, maybe buying some resin or rosin, excuse me, for your violin bow. Maybe they need a, I don't know, a new saddle for horseback riding, something like that. And they can also get gift certificates to memberships at the zoo or the kids museum or a jump house or something like that. Those are really great low clutter or no clutter gifts that people can give your kids. So if you mention those things, it helps. It also helps if you talk about like, especially for the younger kids, what characters they're into or what activities they're into in terms of like, they always wanna wear a shirt that has a football on it or something like that. So that way you can be like, oh, you know what? She loves Minnie Mouse. And we just got her a big girl bed and, she, bed and she needs new sheets. So they could go out and they could get a Minnie Mouse bedding set and that's useful for you. It's not taking up space and cluttering. It's something she needs and it's something she would enjoy at the same time. Uh, another good idea for kids who are gamers is gift cards to like their favorite gaming system. So for instance, my son recently got a Robux gift card and he loved it. It was his favorite gift, I think because now he can buy things in Roblox that we would have said no to. So those are some easy ideas for that. And I think the bottom line is always be respectful of the person who's giving the gift. They're trying to show love to your child. They're trying to show love to you. And it's really awkward and can be damaged into a relationship to refuse things um, with a disrespectful attitude. It is acceptable to say, I'm sorry, we really just don't have room for that right now. Um, can I suggest this instead? That's fine, but if they just give you a gift, let your child receive it. The thought was the gift. And if later on down the road, you find your child doesn't play with that after all, or it's something that's getting in the way consistently, you can let it go then. It's okay. The thought was the gift. You gratefully received it. That's what's most important. So to recap, you need to declutter, you need to let go of things. But if your kid won't, find good containing systems, do a toy rotation, and from this point forward, try to get toys that are easier to clean up, easy to store, and have multi-purposes. And if all else fails, <laughs> toy rotation. That's all for today. Happy decluttering. And if you want more tips on decluttering and organizing, feel free to follow me at thismodernmess.com or on Instagram or TikTok at This Modern Mess for even more tips. Uh, you can even sign up for a decluttering checklist on my website that'll tell you 50 or more things that you can declutter guilt-free today. So go get that.